I'm out on the trail with the new bike, and yes, that is an electrical control switch because this is an e-bike, a 26-inch fat tire e-bike. This is from Cyrusher, and they sent this bike to review, but as always, I'm not paid. This isn't sponsored content, and everything you're about to see is 100% based on my experience. Now, you may already be scratching your head because I just said Cyrusher, but the bike's frame says Exter BC, or however this is pronounced, and get ready for lots of that, but apparently it can go either way. But the model, that's XF660. I'm going to dig right in because there's so much that's uncommon, at least to me, about this bike. And that starts with the stem, Satori branded and button and lever controlled. Press the button and lift the lever to adjust the bars. Press the lever back down to secure and super odd to me, but it does seem to hold the bars well and I guess whatever works counts. Along with the Cyrusher and Extra BC brands, there's also lots of Lanky, Lisi, or Lank, Lysi. I'm, I'm just going to say L brand. Lots of it. Like these bars, these 620 millimeter bars. And check this out, a keyed switch. I'm calling it an ignition switch, just to sound cool, but it's for turning the bike off and on. And it's situated right next to the twist throttle, blurring that bike electric motorcycle line just a bit. Shimano, finally a name I know, but this is the Mickey Mouse lever shifter. These work, but like the Orcan, this one can't be snugged down enough to keep it from moving. Brake levers are zoom, and make a note of this because I'll be coming back to it. And the control panel, it's physical switches. Now I have nothing against actual switches, but this looks, I don't know, the big buttons and the bright colors. Doesn't this look like a Fisher Price kid's toy? It does to me, but function is what matters, so we'll see. So far, a Fisher Price looking switch, an odd clamp stem thing, and a motorcycle style keyed ignition switch. And this is just on the handlebars, there's more unique coming. By the way, the switch not only turns the bike off and on, but it also activates the handlebars display that shows the battery level. Next, I want to look at this fork because visually it's not bad looking. It's extra BC branded. Now the seals, they probably aren't the highest end, but I'll say that they work about as good as any Suntour fork seals that I've seen. And the stanchions, they're more beefy than I expected. This is a coil fork and there's also a preload adjustment and a manual lockout. They're also fenders, kind of springy, but they don't bounce into the tires on bumps, at least that I've noticed, and they stay in place laterally. Aside from having an electric motor, the other big ticket item here is those fat tires. 26 by 4.0 fat tires. They're the usual Chow Yang brand and they're fit to the standard wide rims used on most fat bikes. The hubs are that L brand. I haven't taken these apart yet, but at least they have a brand. And another brand, but one step up from generic, are the Zoom Disc Brakes, at least the calipers. The rotors are 160mm, but they're X-Tech branded. The operation is a bit backwards to Americans. The right lever operates the front brake. The bike's frame, it has nice curves and decent looking welds. It's 6061 aluminum and with a slight translation hiccup, light and strength, I'm assuming means light and strong. The finish is satin black with white trim, though the bike comes in multiple colors and the graphics, they're right on that edge of just enough and too much. But to me, it looks good. I like the look of the bike visually until this which is odd because there's ample room for a speed controller down here where it would normally be, but for some reason they chose to mount it up here. And another thing, now this doesn't bother me personally, but most Americans expect a bike tailored for the US market and to not have writing they can't read on it, especially on places like the battery label, which aside from the word Panasonic is all Chinese. Chinese extends to the accessory box and even the instructions, where it looks like English was a vague afterthought. That accessory kit, it includes the charger, which has an internal fan, a foot, which is a pump, a hex wrench set, and a combo open end wrench. And by the way, that foot, the little air pump, it's compact and kind of cool. And this is also a bike that requires two keys, one for the switch and one for the battery. And that battery, it's mounted, well, to remove it, there's no pins. There's a threaded cable. Another thing that I can't see being looked on favorably is even cheaper e-bikes have a base with pin connectors. The battery also has a separate on-off switch, and I learned quickly to check that, otherwise turning the ignition switch is kind of a letdown. The battery housing also has a level indicator, and the charge port's on the bottom right side. Now, I wouldn't say this is a bad setup, because it works, but that connection point, I can't find a word other than cheap that fits. For the drivetrain, there are alloy pedals, and these are okay. Now, the crank arm's 170mm, L-branded on one side, on the other, forged maple. 
This is a square taper setup with a sealed cartridge bottom bracket and a single chain ring that's 48 tooth. And it has a nicely machined guard that looks good. And hiding behind that guard is an exposed cadence sensor. Now I have another bike with an exposed sensor and it works well, but it's also considerably cheaper. Another thing, this only has five magnets, far fewer than I normally see, so along with the brakes, make a note of that. Now I'm not sure of this chain's brand, but it's not the usual KMC. The derailleur is a Shimano Torni, the freewheel it's Shimano 2, a 7 speed. And here's the heart of the beast, an L branded 500 watt motor. And for the curious, the model number. Other L branded items, the seat post clamp, the seat post, and the saddle. That saddle looks decent, at least until I get distracted by the speed controller. A couple of additional features are the bike's side stand and the headlight. So there's the component rundown, a bit unique. But the ride, that's going to be the most telling feature of all. Now I was curious how this 500 watt motor was going to propel the 59 pounds of the bike along with those 26 inch fat wheels. And pleasantly, it is enough to spin it up well. Now it doesn't accelerate super fast, but I wouldn't say it was slow either, though any of my other e-bikes would probably smoke it off the line. Now once it gets going, it moves pretty good. The top speed is stated as 25 miles per hour, or 26, depending upon where I look. I was able to hit 24 as my peak, and that's on flat ground before I run out of pedal. Comfortable cruise speed, 16 to 18. And that's always in mode three or the highest, and that Fisher Price selector, I found it to be, well, selective. I have to pay attention to accurately get into one or two, so I just stay in three like I do on all my other e-bikes. I also quickly realized that that combo of fat tires and the front suspension works pretty well together. Easily capable of taking on any city obstacles I could envision coming across. Even when I lock out the fork, those big wheels alone do an adequate job on bumpy sidewalks. Good so far, but on hill climbing, at least on steep hills, the 500 watt motor it does struggle a bit and that's also where that low magnet count I mentioned on the cadence sensor comes in. Because there are so few points for the motor to be able to switch on and off with those magnets, it can be very inconsistent. Especially if I have to stop and start on big hills. However, on open roads where I can get the bike up to speeds, in those situations, the cadence sensor is acceptable, but it would really be hard to mess it up there. Another thing I like to check on e-bikes is how freely they roll. See if there's any noticeable drag from the motor. And I didn't notice any on the XF660, so that's good. What's not good? Those zoom mechanical disc brakes. These big wheels, that's lots of rotating mass, and I'm pulling as hard as I can coming off this big hill, and this slows at best. In my opinion, this bike really needs hydraulic brakes. But that didn't stop me, pun intended, from wanting to do something stupid with those big fat wheels and the better than expected front suspension, so I ventured onto Wildwood for a quick loop on the Ranger Station Trail. And right away I can tell, the suspension it's good enough that I can notice when it's in lockout versus when not. Some suspensions I can't say that for. Now let me put in a couple of disclaimers here because I don't recommend riding cadence sensor equipped e-bikes on mountain bike trails. The way a cadence sensor engages and disengages motors just isn't a good fit for trail riding, at least safe trail riding, at least to me. And also riding throttle equipped e-bikes, that's blurring that line of riding a non-bike on a trail. But I'm doing this for pseudoscience and because apparently I have little self-worth. That said, aside from the usual torny derailleur complaints, this was far better and far more usable than I expected. Now I did have to take some caution, a delicate balance between throttle and cadence assist, but this climb, one that more often than not conditioning wise bests me, I can easily, albeit slowly, work my way up. Now the 500 watt motor, it is at its peak propelling me and the bike up this hill, but think about this, going uphill on a trail and doing it easily, like I'm casually pedaling down the street and without the bike feeling like it's gonna break, that's good and bad because it's making me want one of those Trek full suspension e-bikes that I can't afford. I'm impressed. I didn't expect this to be as smooth and easy as it is and that suspension it's far exceeded my expectations, at least thus far. And that motor hanging in there with the most electrical sounds I've experienced yet. But so far it has been enough. Now Cyrusher does have a thousand watt e-bike similar to this one and I can only imagine that would be far more capable. But for the bulk of my riding on this XF660 it's been enough that I've been able to have fun. So thumbs up for fun but what about value? 
Well, that varies from person to person and budget to budget, but this bike is currently priced at $16.90, and that's a lot to me. Now, it does work, and I have had enough time with it to gather some data, so here it is. I'll start with battery life. So far, multiple rides, I've gotten between 18 to 21 miles per charge. All on the highest pedal assist with throttle takeoffs. The drivetrain feels solid and the Torney works fine, though on hilly areas I think a mega range freewheel may be better suited, that or more gears, like 9 or 10 speeds. I haven't had any problems with any of the electrical parts. They've all worked well, as have the accessories, and that's good. Areas that work okay, but could be better, the cadence sensor. This definitely needs more magnets, and at this price, a sealed unit. The brakes, I've already mentioned this could use hydraulics because these work okay going slow, but fade quickly as speed increases. The battery connection. Functional, yes. Desirable, not so much. I also expect my shifter not to move, and at this price, something higher tier. The motorcycle-like switch, that's grown on me, but in direct sunlight, the display screen that it turns on is barely visible. And obviously, the poor placement of the speed controller. Now, I did ask them why they put it here, and they said it was for easy access, but whatever. There's stuff all over this bike that I find so curious. Now, I've only had problems with one thing, so I'm not saying these others are bad, just curious. There's only one area that I view as bad, and I've already mentioned this really needs hydraulic brakes, but during my testing, the right brake lever had started moving, and I discovered this was because the retention bolt had broken in half. Luckily, it's sandwiched between other stuff, so it can't go anywhere, but still, it was an issue, and more importantly, it brought more focus onto those brakes, brakes that at this price should already have been hydraulics. Now, I can pleasantly report that I alerted Cy Rusher, and within a few days, a replacement lever arrived. The upside is they actually had the replacement part handy, and per their website, this has a one-year warranty on the frame and six months on the battery. I'm assuming that means the electrical. So there you have it. My first look and first experiences with the Cy Rusher XF660 Fat Tire e bot So what do you think about what you've just seen? Sort of fun and sort of weird, right? Comment below and let me know your opinions. Links are in the description if you want to see more info. Be sure you're subscribed and you have the notification bell active and all that. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.